Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Atlanta United 2020 uh, career mode. As you guys see on the screen, well, I guess I get the big thing I should say is that I've actually already recorded this, but um, the audio is at negative 50 for like all seven videos that I recorded today. So starting with this one, and then I think like one, maybe two uh, player career modes, we're also gonna be doing just regular commentaries, no live commentary, uh, just talking over the gameplay, talking to you guys um, about what's going on. I didn't wanna lose all the footage and I didn't wanna like skip past anything and there's no way to re for me to really go back and redo it. I'm sure there was an auto save somewhere that I could have grabbed, but um, just figure I'd go ahead and redo the commentary, which is totally fine. Honestly, we have about nine minutes in this video to talk, and it's a bit easier for me to just kind of get my thoughts on the board instead of trying to play at the same time. So obviously with this Atlanta United career mode, uh, we wanted to play with the squad that you guys see on the screen. No Joseph Martinez on the team. We have signed Darren Maddox to replace him. We also brought in Jurgen Dam uh, to kind of fill out the team, a player that we've been linked with quite a bit. But um, we're really just using this series to talk about what's going on in the world of Atlanta United. So I'm recording two episodes a week. Um, where we're going to talk about what happened in the previous week and what we're looking at going into the next week. So as of yesterday, today's Sunday, um, yesterday was the FC Cincinnati match, uh, which was actually a really good game. It was a good game to watch. Uh, I think defensively we're still a little shaky, but we started the game with Waiki, who we had just signed to a professional contract. Um, and then we, he ended up getting injured, and then we put our homegrown out there, George Campbell, who gets to play his first game in the MLS, which is awesome there. He actually ended up playing relatively well, um, and I don't think he's at fault really for the goal that we ended up conceding to, uh, what's his name, the Japanese player that, that FC Cincy signed. But um, we ended up getting two goals, one from Barco and one from Emerson Heinemann. Uh, Barco got an assist and a goal, so he played really, really well. The Heinemann goal was also very good. Um, now, the, my only worry that I think I did talk about in this video um, was that we did end up going up 2-1, in the episode or in the in the game rather and then we just kind of like sat back with the one goal lead and just let them continuously shoot the ball like I genuinely thought we were going to end up drawing that game if not losing it by the end of it just because we weren't taking any chances whatsoever to shoot the freaking ball um, we literally just kind of got the ball and then didn't do anything with it and then went back and defended again so um, that worries me and that's something that um, I feel like happens a little too often with Frank DeBoer's team uh, and that does really really worry me coming down the road just with the team with how things are playing out um, and down the road it might end up causing us problems I think right now we're fine against a team like FC Cincinnati who maybe doesn't have a, the you know the striking potential of some other teams I think we can get away with it obviously we ended up conceding one thankfully not two but uh, we ended up surviving that game, but I don't know how often we can do that. Maybe with a full-fledged defense that's not injured, that's not uh, kind of scraps pulled together, no offense to the players that we did bring in, but um, once we get Miles back, once we get Franco Escobar back, um, maybe it looks a little bit better to, to run the team like that. I'm not too sure, but I will say that I am pleasantly surprised with the 3-5-2 or the 3-4-3, I guess, technically. Um, I will say that throughout, I think, this episode and the next episode, I kind of went through the thought process of Frank DeBoer trying to truly understand if he does stick with the 3-4-3 this season or if he's going to swap between the two, um, which in this in this series, I think between this episode and next episode, I do switch back to the four in the back formation. But in my head, the players that we've signed are all players to play in the 3-4-3. I think it's what Frank wanted to do last year. Obviously, we ended up going back and forth between the four in the back and the three in the back. And I think Frank just prefers to play in the three in the back, which obviously turns into a five in the back defensively. I think he feels safer in that. I think it makes uh, makes more sense for him to play a little bit more defensive late game with a three in the back formation. Uh, so I think it's something that he could definitely uh, or is looking to do with the team, with the players that he has signed, with the likes of uh, Castillo and uh, uh, Jake Mulraney, and um, on the right side having. Uh, Brooks Lennon and obviously Franco Escobar. I think he wants wing backs. I don't think he's interested in having a fullback. 
in that role. So um, I do think the 3-4-3 is the future of Atlanta United. It is the future of Frank DeBoer's team, which at this point you really can't complain too much about because he is seeing success with it. Um, we're two, two for two so far, and that's with Joseph Martinez being injured this game. The guy who's scoring on the screen right now, Adam John, did play in the last game. Uh, did worry me a little bit, but showed signs that he could be successful. Not as a goal scorer, but as almost like a false nine, just uh, ball-holding type player, I think he could end up succeeding with uh, quite a bit. So it does intrigue me in that sense. I don't think he, he might end up getting a goal here and there while he is playing if we don't end up signing anyone else. But I think he best excels with getting the ball and having Pity and Barco run off of him. I think it's going to take some growing pains to get them used to playing with Adam John because he is a very different player than Joseph Martinez, obviously. Um, and there were just situations where you would see um, Joseph or you would see Barco get the ball or Pity get the ball and then not know what to really do with it after that because they don't really trust Adam John to shoot the ball, but they don't really know how to play with him yet either, which will come with growing pains again if we don't sign anybody else. Um, there were a lot, a lot, a lot of positives to the game. I do think uh, George Campbell really does intrigue me. Uh, I think he showed a lot of good signs. I do think he'll come with mistakes. He's a young center back, but he could have the potential to be another type of Miles Robinson player for us. Somebody young that can come in, that can learn really well from the older players, uh, from the veterans, and truly start to become a really good player. Um, I do hope that we sign this guy on the screen, Jurgen Dam. Um, I don't think he's going to be a goal scorer either, but somebody that could come on for pity. That's going to give us a little bit of pace. We did see Rosetto come in in the last game, and although he did okay, I think he's going to have the same kind of growing pains as Pity, where he's one, I don't think his stamina is up for it. He looked like he just didn't really want to run that much, which Pity did a lot of last year. He always said it was stamina reasons and things like that, but. Um, I think somebody, we just need an injection of pace. I don't think Jurgen Dam is going to try to prove anything. I think he knows what type of player he is. I think he's just a runner, and he's totally fine with that, and that's good for late game situations because Frank does like to defend so much. If you guys were watching the game last night, um, there was so much defensive stuff that was happening at the end of the game just trying to hold everything in place which is fine but then Barco would get the ball and run down to here and the two players that are running on the field right now weren't there it was just Barco running the ball and that was it and there was no assistance with him whatsoever which really did cause problems for the team because um, I genuinely think we could have gotten a third goal maybe not from the player that was running up the field with Barco but if they can get the ball and then pass it back to Barco Barco can score Pity can score or Adam John can score who knows but uh, I do think we're missing that late game push of pace somebody that's uh, willing to still be a little defensive but still capable of getting forward doing what they need to do and getting up the field for a counter attack um, even if it's just to run the ball all the way up the field to the corner flag and hold it there or to maybe steal a goal and get a 3-1 lead uh, but I think that is my only worry with this team and that is something that worries me quite a bit um, is how much we really are just content with holding a 2-1 lead because uh, we 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 blew those leads last year. I mean, they, they resulted in draws, I think, more than losses, thankfully. But uh, it just gets a little too close whenever you end up doing something like that. So hopefully we end up uh, getting somebody that does have a little bit of pace, either as a substitute option for us or for an Adam John replacement striker. Uh, I've seen Quincy, however you say his last name, uh, linked with the club a little bit, along with Daniel Sturridge and some other players. It does uh, rile up a little bit of interest in the squad, but uh, we'll see how it ends up going again. I hope you guys did enjoy this. I know I didn't really commentate the gameplay that much, uh, but it was just an LA Galaxy win and uh, a loss to Columbus Crew. But in the next episode, we'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay and this career mode. Uh, we'll move into talking about what next week looks like against Sporting KC. So again, if you guys did enjoy, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And until the next one, I'll see you guys.